Hiya, and welcome back to That Guy Sews. In today's tutorial, I've decided to do a lined bomber jacket. Now, there's a few tutorials out there on YouTube, but none of them actually show you how to construct a lined bomber jacket from start to finish. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to do so. Now, because this tutorial takes a hell of a long time to do, and it took me a really long time to film, I've decided to make two separate videos for this. This tutorial here is going to be based around how to construct a pattern for a bomber jacket based on a previous one that you already have. And then the second tutorial will be purely on how to construct that bomber jacket. If you want to skip this video and go straight to the construction side of the bomber jacket, please click this link here. If you have any suggestions for future projects, please just drop a line down below and I'll get back to you and maybe there's something I could do in the future. If you haven't already guys, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe down below. The materials that you're going to need for this tutorial are one bomber jacket, a ruler, some scissors, a rotary cutter, some pins with the pin cushion, you're going to need some lining fabric as well as the main body fabric and some rib knit for the cuffs, the neck band and for the waistband. I also used three zips, one for the centre and two for each pocket. I needed a cutting board, some pattern paper and a pen and some chalk. To start this tutorial off, I turned the bomber jacket inside out and tucked the sleeves inside of the garment. This way it was nice and easy for me to trace the silhouette of the bomber jacket, including the armholes. You need to make a note where the waistband starts and also where the neckband starts, as you won't actually be tracing those parts right now. I then straightened the lines out with a ruler and added a dotted line with a half an inch seam allowance and proceeded to do this across half of the garment itself so that when I folded this over, I could then cut it out and have a completely symmetrical back pattern. Once you've created your back pattern piece, you're going to use this as a framework to create the front. That way, you're ensuring that it will match up at all the seams. However, you're only going to trace half of that back pattern as there's going to be a zip down the center front seam. Once you get to the center front of the seam, you're just going to add half an inch for the seam allowance because there will be a zip inserted. It's really important that you know exactly how long your zip is or the zip that you're going to use is because that's how long the front of your garment is going to be. So my zip was 18 inches, so I needed to ensure that my garment from the neckline down to the bottom where the bottom of the zip would be is 22 inches. And remember, half an inch at the top and the bottom will be within the seam allowance so you need to make sure you take that out when you're looking at how long the zip's going to be in comparison to the garment. The next thing I looked at was my pocket placement so grabbing one of my six inch zips and placing it on the front pattern piece to try and work out exactly where I would like the pocket placement to be. Once I had worked that out I just made two marks at each end of the pocket then just adding little triangles at each end of the line which I'm going to cut into later and I'll explain when I'm constructing the pocket. And as you can see, the front and back pattern pieces do match up. The next thing I needed to do was construct the sleeve. So I started off by measuring the distance around the armhole of the sleeve pattern that I just created, which was 10 inches. So for front and back, that would be 20 inches minus the four half inches for the seam allowance. So overall, that would be roughly 18 inches. Therefore, I know that my sleeve is going to have to be around about 18 inches round. I then measured the distance from the top of the shoulder down to where the sleeve meets the cuff. And the underarm seam, down again to the bottom where the sleeve meets the cuff. Lastly, I just measured the width at the bottom of the sleeve where it connects with the cuff. By taking these measurements, I can now draw out the rough shape of the sleeve. I then just freehand draft the sleeve head and measured it to be certain that it is around about the same distance that I'm going to need to fit inside the armhole. Now what I've done is measured the entire circumference around the bottom of the jacket so I can work out how big this waistband needs to be. So you measure out the front pattern piece times that by two and add that to what the back pattern piece is. Because there's going to be three seams constructed within this, we need to make sure we take out three inches from this overall number now. And that's going to be the rough circumference of what your jacket would be. But for the waistband, because it's made out of a rib knit, what I've decided to do is minus another 
two and a half to three inches off of this and then use that for your waistband pattern. My waistband pattern might look a bit small here, but it's because I'm going to be cutting it on the fold. So it's gonna be twice the width as you can see. I've done the same technique for the cuff where I measured around the circumference of the bottom of the sleeve pattern, minus around an inch and a half and that is then going to be your cuff measurement. In order to determine how big my pocket can be, I need to work out the distance that I have from the zipper down to where my zip is going to end. I then know the distance that I have to play with in order to construct my pocket. So to construct the pocket lining, I've added half an inch each side of where my zipper would end and then constructed a nice even square in which I'm going to be drawing out my pocket. And again, I just freehand drew half of the pocket, cut that out, and then folded it over on itself to ensure that I had a symmetrical pocket. In order to work out the neckband, again, we're gonna use the same technique where you measure all the way around the neckline itself from the front and the back piece, times the front piece by two, add it all together, and then minus three inches for the seam allowance. And again, I would recommend taking around about one and a half to two inches off so that your ribbing is nice and tight all the way around the neckband. Again, I freehand drafted this part of the neckband up until the halfway point and then folded it over on itself to ensure it's symmetrical. These are all the separate pattern pieces that you're going to need in order to construct this bomber jacket. Now let's get on with the cutting out. So for the front pattern piece, you're going to lay the weights down over the pattern or pin it down to the fabric itself and cut out two of these sections. I've then marked with blue chalk exactly where the zips are going to need to be and drawn with a ruler a nice firm line down so that when I'm coming back to this, I can see it later on. I've then flipped the pattern piece over and done the same thing to create the opposite side of the jacket. I've then cut out the back pattern piece of this bomber jacket then folded the fabric over once and proceeded to cut out two pocket pieces. These will be the inside lining of the pocket jacket. Because I constructed half sleeve patterns, I folded the fabric over and just cut out two separate sleeve pieces. I then proceeded to do the same process for the lining of the jacket until I got to the front pattern piece where I've decided to construct an inner lining that will be in the same material as the outer jacket. I did this by tracing out the centre seam of the jacket right up into the shoulder and then came inside from the outer lining around about two and a half inches from the pattern and then just drafted out a curved line down into the bottom of the jacket and made around a quarter of an inch seam allowance up the inside seam. So that this way when I attach this piece to the lining the two quarter of an inch seam allowances will cancel out themselves. I then cut out two of the front facing pieces on opposite sides of the fabric. And then I cut out two front pattern pieces before cutting out the facing area. Now the seam allowance that I made within the facing needs to be folded over. So I have to chop into the curves and then fold over that seam allowance so that then when I cut out the lining, it will have the opposite seam allowance. Now into the final steps of this part of the video is that I cut out some interfacing for the front facing of the jacket and also some small sections of interfacing to keep the pocket nice and stable. I've just then ironed these onto the wrong sides of the garment. The final process in this is to cut out the waistband, the neckband and the cuffs within a rib knitting. Remembering to cut the waistband and the neckband both on the fold. Thanks so much for watching the first video. Now if you want to see how I got from there to this bomber jacket, please click to the next video.